Good morning and welcome to worship. It's great to see you this morning. Um, I want to welcome Arrows of the Almighty up here with me this morning. And also, I neglected to include Jim Straw in the group that's listed at the bottom of the bulletin. So welcome, Jim, as well. We're glad you're with the Arrows. I want to um, invite Dondina Johnson forward. Uh, she has a special announcement about the Gateway Christmas. Many of you have already seen and um, picked an angel or two off the tree uh, that is in the narthex. Uh, I want to just remind you that um, these gifts are for the children of our Gateway community. Also uh, added to that tree are, um, you'll notice they're a different kind of angel, kind of a, a green uh, angel that is for staff. This is not something they did. We've just added it to. Um, if you prefer to um, take a staff person instead of a child or a child and a staff, that would be great. Um, be sure that when you choose a child, you uh, write that your name beside the number that is on your angel. The staff sheet is at the very back of um, the sheets that are on the clipboard out beside the tree. Also, uh, if you will note, some of the angels have a snowflake on the wing. That snowflake signifies that that family has special need and um, we would encourage you, if you choose an angel with a snowflake on it, to um, buy just a little bit more um, to help that family out. Um, the tree will be moved to the entryway by the office window um, after today. At, and uh, you may come in at any time during the week and pick one up if uh, you would like. All of the gifts need to be returned to me by Friday, December the 11th. There is a sheet um, also on uh, the uh, sign-up table out there. Uh, please take one of those away. Now I had announced that there would be a second angel for each child. Um, Gateway was having trouble just getting um, ready for today with one angel. So I would recommend that you write that child's name down or make a copy of the angel that you have and post it. We do want to remember to pray for each of these children and staff persons throughout the coming year. Any questions? Always happy to help. Thank you, Dondina. We have our charge conference today. It is at 3.30 p.m. It is Zoom. Uh, you, anybody is welcome to participate in that and, and be a part. If you want to receive the link for that Zoom charge conference and have not yet, please email me or see me this morning and I'll be sure to get you included. COVID has disrupted life again. We are um, going to go to our online, our live streaming worship services after this Sunday through the first of the year. Uh, this is in light of the governor's mandate and the bishop's recommendation. So we are going to abide by those rules. Our small groups are still allowed to meet. Uh, so if you are part of one of those, check with your leader to see if your group is going to meet or not, either on Sunday morning or throughout the week. I do know that Kenny Hall's Sunday School class has decided this morning to continue to meet at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. So that small group will be continuing to meet as long as the church is open. Along the lines, um, Christmas Eve service will also be online service. We will have um, 
services uh, for lessons and carols and our Christmas Eve service. You're invited to take with you one of the votive candles. These are in the back. Uh, there are baskets of them. You can take one with you, take several so that you can hand them out to family and friends and invite them to watch with you. Lessons and Carols is December 13th, and then, of course, our Christmas Eve service. Also, um, those at home can come by and pick up a candle. The church will remain open. So if you've missed today and want to come by and pick up those things so you can participate from home, uh, please do so. These will be at the office window. Poinsettias will continue to be sold. We are decorating the church uh, kind of over the top. There are 11 new Christmas trees that will be placed here in the sanctuary with white lights only and in the narthex. It'll become a winter wonderland um, and our nativity will be placed in the center of our sanctuary. So be sure to come in throughout the week. You'll see it as we live stream together but want to invite you to uh, purchase those poinsettias as you feel called to. Those that you want to honor or remember will be listed online in our live stream service. So you'll be able to see uh, your name with those that you are uh, purchasing the poinsettia in honor or memory of. The church, again, will remain open and small groups will still meet. We do have another event that, of a small group, if you'd like to be a part of this, next Sunday from 2 to 4 in Fellowship Hall. Uh, there will be a group putting together our Advent boxes. That is a drive-through event for our church and community where families can come by and pick up one of the Advent boxes. But packing those boxes will take place next Sunday in Fellowship Hall from 2 to 4. I invite now Jim Alt to come forward and share about our noisy offering. Good morning. Good morning. In conclusion, you were really noisy last Sunday. <laughs> that noisy Sunday was to give us an opportunity to show our gratitude for our blessings and also to remind us that little things add up. And add up they did. There were, this is you'll find this interesting, 8,000 912 pennies, 1,577 nickels, 2,635 dimes, 1,987 quarters, and four one dollar coins. We, there were $932.22 of coins. Unbelievable. And give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> They, uh, and then added to that, uh, some, uh, some of you put in cash and checks, so we had a total of $1,517 that we received uh, last Sunday, and that's great, yeah. There, there were some very interesting things that also, when, when we started through the sorting process in the machine at the bank, some things came through. There was one coin that said, a no cash value game token. Don't know where that was from. <laughs> we had two 50 cent euros. We had one 5 cent euro. There was one <laughs> Zambian coin. I don't know how far afield <laughs> we traveled. And uh, there were uh, three German Fenning coins, one Canadian penny, one uh, unidentified uh, coin from Spain, and then a uh, 10 peso uh, Mexican coin. 
then we had 67 cents on a variety that the machine didn't, didn't accept. But there was one that I, I really want to know who put this one in. Yeah. From uh, New York City, Club 21, there was a token. <laughs> I'm suspecting it was Joe Snyder. <laughs> or maybe Vicky, I don't know. <laughs> or Mark, uh, Mark Finger held up his hand. But anyway, it was a wonderful event. Uh, thank you. The interesting thing is we had 13,538 coins, all of which said, in God we trust. Thank you. Let us now hear and appreciate, be inspired by Arrows of the Almighty. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me.
We gather as God's beloved children. We come together as people whom Jesus calls into community. This becomes a place where all are welcome. We have come to give thanks, to pray and praise, to be with others. Any way that we have come, God accepts and loves us. Praise God. This morning, I want to invite Colton, Claire, and Ryan to join us right up front here. We have a special presentation for you. We are gathered to celebrate a special time in the spiritual journey of these children. Claire, Colton, and Ryan, now you have your very own Bible. The time has come for you to read your Bible and discover God's truths for yourself. We rejoice with you in this special time, and we now pass on to you this valuable treasure, the book of our faith. Will you praise and thank God for this valuable treasure, the Bible? Will you commit to reading, studying, memorizing, and meditating on God's Word? If so, answer, I will. And I'm going to ask the parents and family members of these children to please stand where you are. Parents and family members. Will you praise and thank God for this valuable treasure, the Bible? Will you model to all our children what it means to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ, and to read, study, memorize, and meditate on God's Word? If so, answer, I will. And you may be seated. Members of the body of Christ, Will you praise and thank God for this valuable treasure, the Bible? Will you model to all our children what it means to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ, and to read, study, memorize, and meditate on God's Word? If so, answer, I will. Will you recommit yourselves to study God's Word serve in children's ministry to support these children as they continue to grow in faith. 
Will you recommit yourself to the study of God's word so that the seed planted in the hearts of these children will grow and bear fruit in the kingdom of God? We rejoice in this step in your journey with God. We pray God will guide you to use this Holy Bible at home in study and in worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God and knowledge of God's Word. Congratulations. God bless you. At this time, at this time, I'd like to invite all of the children to follow our banner as it proceeds out of the sanctuary and join us upstairs for children's ministries. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall All these lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then but I can see it now there was Jesus in the waiting in the searching in the heat a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment of where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it.
Let us pray. Oh God, in a world that seems to have gone crazy, we come to you this morning not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people you have called us to be, people who seek justice and peace through your love for all of your people. We struggle with questions that seem to have no answers and problems that have insurmountable solutions. We seem to be a deeply divided people Surely we humans test your patience, Lord, but we know that your love is all-encompassing, never-ending, always forgiving. This is our source of hope. You are our hope for the world, and it is in this hope that we live and move and have our being. God, this morning we lift up the people of Anderson, family and friends, strangers who have lost loved ones, those who are struggling with losses of all types, health, jobs, freedoms, relationships, hope. Give us and each of those around us the strength and courage and protection to go on. You have told us that you love us all and consider each one of us important and a part of your creation. Help us to be more like your son, whom you sent to show us how to live this life. Help us to be a positive change agent in the world. Give us opportunities each day to lead by example showing and speaking you to others. All these things, Lord, we ask in the name of our Savior, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. New Testament this morning is from Hebrew 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such huge crowds of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, expose of the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endures the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. <clears throat> Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. <clears throat> Please stand as you able for the reading of the gospel. John 1, verses 1 through 12. In the beginning the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. This is God's word for God's people today. 
Thanks be to God. Want to draw your attention to a graphic that's going to come up. It is a web of what look like circles with padlocks in them. That graphic, when I saw it, I have seen and heard all kinds of metaphors and descriptions for living in a pandemic. And I thought, oh, here's another one. We're living behind the padlock, trying to keep ourselves safe. But that's not what that graphic is at all. That graphic happens to be for something called zero trust privilege. And it really caught my attention because that is so foreign to the way I think. Zero trust privilege. What it actually means is that there is no one or nothing that is trusted and given privilege to anything. It's actually a cyber security model for the business world. It does not allow any, it does not trust any entity or any peoples and privileges are extremely inaccessible. So much so that those that do have the privilege to access information have to go through hurdle after hurdle after hurdle to get it. That is extremely foreign to our understanding of the availability of our Creator. God is with us, makes himself available to us, walks beside us. But trust is something that we have struggled with. Trust around the world. There is um, a report that's posted every year. It's an annual report that gives a barometer of trust. It's called the Edelman Trust Barometer. And he does all kinds of research and discovers that in 2018, and I'm guessing nothing has really changed. When I checked it, we're just as low as ever. 2018, the world hit a bottom of trust. Nobody trusted anything and anybody about anything, especially when it came to business. We are a person, a group of people in this world, humanity, that doesn't bear very well with trust. We don't trust each other. We don't offer our trust. Maybe we're not trustworthy. But we are told in Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10, that trust is extremely important in living a life of satisfaction. That it's the root of living life to its fullest. We have to be able to trust. And you see, it is so important for us. This is something that scripture, our faith, is built upon. Now, the business world understands this maybe more than any other realm. There was a commercial that showed a little girl out in a field of green, and she was standing there so peacefully, and she had a big smile on her face. And off in the distance, those watching the commercial could see a huge African rhinoceros running directly for her, charging right at her. And she just stood in this green field 
with a big smile on her face and the look of peace and serenity all around her as the rhino kept charging. And the caption that came up is, said, trust is to not be afraid. The rhino kept running and running and her smile stayed in place and her demeanor was unchanged and the rhino ran right up to the little girl and stopped. She reached out her hand and she touched the horn of the rhinoceros. And the caption said, even when you are vulnerable. It was a commercial for insurance, of all things. We don't trust like that, do we? Sometimes we extend our trust, but we misplace it. We misplace it in things that we shouldn't necessarily trust, knowingly or unknowingly. In all the wildfires that have been out west, during one of those wildfires, a photographer went out. His assignment was to photograph the fire. He was told that a small plane would be waiting for him at the airport. So he went up to the plane, he, sure enough, there it was, it was a small Cessna, it was waiting for him. He loaded up all his equipment and the pilot was in his seat and he said, hopped in, secured the door and he said, let's go. Well, the pilot looked pretty unsure about himself, a little bit worried, caught the wind, lifted the plane up and they flew off away from the airport. The photographer then said, go a little bit more north and then dip down toward the flyer. And the pilot, kind of surprised, said, why? And he said, well, I'm a photographer and my assignment is to get close to this fire and get some photographs. And the man looked horrified who was seated in the pilot's position in the plane, looked back and said, you mean you're not the flight instructor? <laughs> we misplace our trust. This morning there was a God thing. She had no idea what I was going to say this morning. She's not even here to say it. I did ask her permission. Grace Stout, a six-year-old, who was seated right over here this morning, came up and said, I drew this for you this morning. Here you go. It says three things you can trust about God. This is a God thing, folks. God is powerful. God is strong. God is kind. You can trust God. Wow. Our scriptures this morning don't even have the word trust in them, although it's one of those words that you'll find frequently in scripture. But that was intentional. I wanted you to hear from scripture how trust weaves into everything that we're touched on. In Hebrews 12, we hear that we need to trust Jesus' example. We need to look to Jesus. Trust who he is, what he did among us, what he continues to do among us. In our first John passage, what we hear is that we have to trust God in order to recognize Jesus. We have to trust him in order to accept him. We have to trust him in order to believe he is who he says he is. Trust is huge. And then, this culminates with, if you trust in Jesus, you are a child of God. Excuse me. 
A child of God is one that trusts Jesus. <coughs> Projecting a little too much. Excuse me. The child of God is one that trusts Jesus. <clears throat> now, being a child of God can be kind of confusing, especially when we remember that Jesus was announced in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. <clears throat> the angel Gabriel told Mary, the child to be born will be holy, the Son of God. Folks, that's kind of intimidating. We are sons and daughters of God, and so is Jesus. <clears throat> that feels kind of heavy. It's a big responsibility, doesn't it? But there is a bit of a difference between us and Jesus. <clears throat> that actually meant to be humorous there. There's a big difference between us and Jesus. <clears throat> but you see, <clears throat> Jesus in this passage in John, the Word, Jesus was with God and Jesus is God. Jesus is naturally God, God's Son. Identified as God's son because he was born here among us. <coughs> we have <clears throat> a different nature. Our nature is that of an adopted child into the family of God. That doesn't make us second rate. It doesn't make us less than a child of God. <clears throat> it makes us co-heirs, a co-children with God. Roger was six years old. He had been raised up until that point in a family of drug abuse, of neglect, of violence, he was removed out of that and placed with a very loving family. And Roger experienced something very different. He experienced a family that loved him. He had his own room. He had siblings that seemed like they cared about him. He had meals when it was time to have a meal. He was accepted for who he was and loved for who he was. But he had growing to do. He faced some real challenges. He had to learn that he didn't have to scream when he didn't get his way. He, didn't he had to learn that he didn't have to steal food from the kitchen and hide it in his room in order to have something to eat. He had to learn that violence wasn't the answer to any kind of argument or when he was afraid. Those were hard, hard things for a six-year-old to learn throughout the rest of his life. But never did those cause his family to say, you're not one of us because of those things. You can't be a part of our family anymore because you got violent or you yelled or you stole food. No, they loved him regardless. That's like our relationship with God. 
kind of like a Roger. We have a lot of challenges. We have a lot of growing and maturing as a Christian to do. That doesn't mean God kicks us out of the family. God loves us anyway. Romans 8, 17 tells us that now that we are children of God, we are heirs of God and co-heirs with God. Christ. Wow. What a breathtaking privilege that is. Co-heirs of everything that Christ, everything that God has to offer. We're co-heirs with Christ. And these are some of the privileges that come with being a child of God. One is that we have security. There was a recent survey that interviewed employees just in general in all different walks of life and all different positions. And when they were asked, why do you do the job that you do? If you do it well, why do you do it well? Because if I don't, I'm going to get fired. That was the number one answer. In other words, they obeyed, they did what they were supposed to do out of fear. As a child of God, we don't have to be afraid. We're not going to get kicked out just because we do it wrong. We have security in that relationship with God. We can have confidence. You see, as a child of God, when we're adopted in, just like an other child, our name changes. We get a new status, a new identity as a child of God. We become his as we trust God. There's an intimacy. We saw this in Jesus when he talked and, and addressed God as Abba. Aramaic was the language that Jesus spoke. And in Aramaic, Abba means daddy. Folks, that's the intimacy that God wants to have with us as well. You don't call just anybody daddy. It's someone that you trust, that you care about, and you know cares about you. There's inheritance. We hear that we're co-heirs with Christ. All that God has. Usually when we think about inheritance, we think about the long-term future, and there is that. We have a promised future of eternity with a loving God. But it's also right here and now. Our inheritance starts now. And as we usher in a season of Advent and Christmas, we remember the love, hope, peace, and joy that come. Those are part of our inheritance. Those are things that we have and enjoy right now. And then there is a family likeness. As we grow in our relationship with God, we become more like Christ. And people can see it. See it in how we live, how we speak, how we treat one another. Becoming more like Christ. And you've heard all those stories where siblings were separated at birth and 
and eventually found each other. There were two brothers that did that. Recently, they were documented and listed in the paper. They happened to be co-workers. They both moved furniture, and they'd be at the, at delivering a, a couch to someone, and they'd be carrying it into the home, and people would, would offer the um, observation that, boy, you two look an awful lot alike. Are you related? Nah, not related. <laughs> they ended up being brothers. They discovered this because one of them began to search family, he knew he knew he was adopted, and he began to search family records and discovered that he did have a brother, and he discovered his brother's birth date. So one time in just general conversation, these two men were talking, and he discovered his brother's birth date. When the story was published in the newspaper, the local paper, a woman came to the furniture business where they both worked. And she was in tears and she had brought her birth certificate. She was their half-sister who had been born long before they had been born. And she said, I've spent my whole life knowing I had brothers and never knew who they were. Folks, that's an image of the church. As the family of God. As the ch children of God. We invite people to come in and be with us and become recognized as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, becoming part of the family. What a privilege to share that news that they belong also to God's family. He wants to embrace them too as his children. What a privilege to share that. We are about to enter a season of Thanksgiving and Advent and Christmas with restrictions galore. Where we can't meet together, you're being encouraged to not meet with your family, to stay distant in order to protect each other from the virus that's going around. Whatever you do, if, if you don't get together with family, it doesn't make you stop being family, right? You find ways to connect with those folks. Maybe you use a computer. Maybe you use a telephone. Maybe you just sit in the driveway or the garage where you can really spread out. Whatever you do, you stay connected. Folks, we need to stay connected as the family of God, as the children of God. Still finding ways to share it with others, even when we can't do it the way we've always done it before. Telephone those people who would gather here with you on a Sunday morning, but now can't. Let them know you're thinking about them. Check in with folks. Send cards. Make sure people out there know that the church is open and welcome them to come in at any time. Folks, the place is going to be decorated for Christmas. We're going to invite you to come in on your own to worship, to see the decorations, to enjoy God in this space. There are ways to stay connected. Things that we can do. But also, we always have to remember that those gifts that God gave us through Jesus Christ, 
the gift of this relationship is something that will hold us together as the family of God. You see, zero trust privilege has no place in our faith. We have trust. We're invited to give God all our trust. And we have privileges, gifts given to us by God. There is no zero in our faith. Praise God. Screaming down the avenue, just another story on the evening news wall. Politics and prejudice, how did it come to this? When everybody's gotta pick a side, it don't matter if you're wrong. Show. 
want to leave us this morning with a message from God through grace. Three things you can trust about God. God is strong. God is powerful. God is kind. You can trust God. Amen.